All right, boys and girls, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. End of the month, end of the quarter, and the beginning of a new week. Welcome to your nightly newsletter for the 31st day of the third month of the year, 2014. My name is Joseph James. Thank you so much for joining me here this evening. Now, I've had some incredible technology <laughs> technology challenges this evening. Uh, so that's why this newsletter is going out a little bit late here today. So I'm going to make this a relatively quickly report. Um, I've got charts to go over with you guys. We're going to talk about what happened today. We'll talk about what's on the schedule for tomorrow. That way you know what happened today, and so you're ready for tomorrow. But again, I am going to go a little bit briefly through this here this evening. You know, these computers, they work great until they stop working sometimes. So before we get started, though, I want to remind you here that we have a free trial on our website over here at schooloftrade.com. Check it out, schooloftrade.com, and you, of course, learn more about our beginner, intermediate, and advanced memberships when you're on the website. Don't forget, we've always got somebody standing by here 24-7, 365, to make sure we take care of your needs. So don't forget to go to schooloftrade.com. Check us out. Also, if you're not watching this video over on our blog, head over to sidewaysmarkets.com where we have a wealth of information here for you. And while you're here, don't forget, please, we got a free tr a free pass for you to come and join our trade room this afternoon. And if you're not a member of our newsletter list, all right, if you're watching this video on YouTube or anywhere else besides our blog, make sure you check out the newsletter sign-up form there, right, and take a peek there at the nightly newsletter. I'll tell you, I love this quote. Pain is temporary. It may last a minute or an hour or a day or even a year, but eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. I love the I love the end of it. If I quit, it will last forever. Right? That was a quote by the the Lance Armstrong. Now this really has I have a soft spot in my heart for this quote because I distinctly remember spending three and a half years and over $100,000 in losses. It was the most stressful. It was the most, uh, it was the most challenging uh, 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 thing I've ever done, right? And most professional traders would agree that getting over that hump, unless, of course, you were trained by somebody at Goldman Sachs, right? I mean, if you were cherry-picked out of MIT and you went to a big investment bank, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty big achievement to be a professional trader. But, I mean, come on. If granddaddy was, if granddaddy owns the exchange and you were bred for this, then, you know, that's one thing. But if you're anything like me, if you come from a world where I'm not a professional trader, my dad was a, still is a contractor, my mom is a school teacher, still is, I don't have the pedigree. I found day trading a freshman in college. I was broke. I didn't have any money, no resources, and no idea how difficult it was going to be for me to become a professional trader. I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit so many times. And I blew I blew two trade accounts. And then on my third trade account, I borrowed money. I borrowed $3,500 from a friend, which is a lot of money back then, still is. And I don't know whether it was finally I learned what I was doing or whether I was too scared to lose my best friend's money. I still don't know why he lent that to me, but I'm thankful he did. Because that third account, that was the one where I figured out in my opinion, the most important thing that turned my trading from a nosedive right, into making all-time highs was a very simple technique called risk-to-reward ratio. Right? Pretty simple, right? I began trading like a business. I risked much less than I got as reward. Guys, we talk about all the things that, that helped me get over that obstacle of becoming a new trader. Um, we talk about it in our trade room nonstop. So come out and see us, and I would love to share with you the struggles and the success that I had. And I really attribute a lot of my success to the fact that I just didn't give up. I kept trying. I took a risk. I didn't let a, a few setbacks get me off my game. Now, let's jump right in here this evening. First of all, last week, we had a monster week last week. Now, don't take my word for it, okay? You can't believe what you see on television these days, kids. Go back on the blog. Go back on my YouTube page, watch the newsletters from last week. You're going to see I gave you too many to count. 
numerous buying and selling opportunities last week on crude. Three different monster winning trades short on gold last week. And then, of course, the Russell, right? Russell was also dropping lower last week, although now we're moving higher. So three different markets last week. He gave you guys guidance for lots of winning, profitable trading that was done last week. Again, don't take my word for it. Go back and look at those newsletters. Let's talk about what happened today in the markets. Crude oil, sideways range today. Very slow early in the session this morning. Only only 109 ticks of range today on crude, a very narrow range. We usually see anywhere from 120 to 150 as far as ticks of range up and down on crude. As you can see, this is much lower than we usually get there. Closing print, 101.48, so just shy of 101.50. We're not on top of that big round number of $100 a barrel right now. But boy, the way the price action has been this week so far, you would think we were. Now, I've been trading crude for a little bit more than, well, almost half my life. So it's been a very, very long-term relationship with crude oil. And I have never seen crude spend this much time going sideways. It makes perfect sense, though. At the end of last year, we got our butts kicked by, the, by Mother Nature. Now, January, February, March, we're still seeing the news reports that are still lingering with that bad weather. We've got issues out of Russia. We've got issues out of Asia. We've got bad weather. We've got bad manufacturing. We've got demand, obviously, increasing out of Russia. Everything here is pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. Now, if you're trying to follow trends right now, a little bit more difficult on crude. That's why we talk about this in our trade room right now. The best way to trade crude is to just do what mama says, right? Buy the lows, sell the highs, and you know what mama says, stay away from that middle, right? Find those middles and stay the heck away from the middle of those ranges right now. It's getting real sloppy in the middle. But definitely buying lows and definitely selling highs of these, of these range-bound markets we're getting right now on crude. So a little bit of an odd bit of price action right now on crude, but uh, we're still getting plenty of opportunities, but it's usually happening later in the session after the news comes out. Let's keep moving. Gold, a relatively typical day on gold, 164 ticks of range, closed down almost 1%. Boy, we nailed gold last week, didn't we? And it continues to drop lower here right now. Boy, if you got short with us last week on gold, you made a killing. The Russell was the big mover today. Bullish market personality. Now, the, now the Russell. If you, now let's let's remember what happened on the Russell. So here we are. We had this long-term bullish channel on the Russell. Remember this from last week? And what do we see? We were at the highs of that channel early last week. We broke through a couple support levels, and sure enough, we called some short trades, right on the Russell. Sorry about this. On the Russell, we called some short trades on the way down off the highs of that channel. So we were getting short all week last week on the Russell. Well then, if you remember, my exact words were, we got right down to the lows and we found some support down here. Now here is a great example on the Russell of what we all kind of really strive to find. And that is a, a time and place where fundamentals and technicals line up together. All right. These are the people. Uh, these are the times when really wealth is created. For example, Michael Marcus, right? Met this, met that guy about ten years ago. He's the gentleman from Market Wizards, right? The guy who made a couple hundred million dollars in the '80s, right? On commodity markets, corn, wheat, soybeans, right? Well, Mr. Marcus was a great example of somebody who timed fundamentals with the technicals, and he got paid because of it. This was an example today on the Russell of how we saw a price jump. Now, what happened? Well, technically speaking, the Russell was at major support on the anchor chart, which we talked about last week. Fundamentally speaking, we had our chairperson, my girl, Janet Yellen. So she comes in today, and what does she say? Well, let's come down here. Let's take a look. Here's what Janet Yellen said. So Russell, of course, 217 ticks. We start moving higher, a little bit more than, a little bit more than a, a point and a half percent, and basically on a reaction to comments from Janet Yellen and after seeing the technical support. So this morning we hear from Janet Yellen just before 10 o'clock, 
She says the economy needs more help. Labor market is worse than the numbers are saying. Inflation, we are still below 2%. We've got room to go there. Un- unemployment rate still above 56 we got room to go there. But basically, she said that the monetary policy to remain loose. Now, whenever you hear a federal, a, a federal reserve banker like, like Ms. Yellen, our chairperson, whenever somebody like her says loose monetary policy, all the speculators on the equity markets are going to go bonkers and they're going to be buying. What I'm really surprised is, is that gold didn't jump. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment or two here. So stick around. I'm going to show you a gold chart. I'm very bearish on gold because of what she said and not what gold did, but what gold didn't do here in this morning session. Stick around for more on that. So now you know what happened today in the news. Gold and Russell were the bigger movers, Russell being the big mover today, and crude still kind of crawling around here. So we're going to keep buying lows and selling highs on crude. News today, 945, Chicago PMI. Boy, I'll tell you, ever since, ever since the end of the year, the city of Chicago has been getting their rear ends given to them. The Chicago PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index in the city of Chicago, not only is it lower than expected, but it was the slowest since August of 2013. Oof, that's not good. That's not good. Now, remember, this is a city who got pounded with snow. But the numbers right now are not making it look like that bad weather was the reason for this. It, it doesn't look like it was if you dig into that report. 9.55, we heard from Janet Yellen, right? She spoke as well in Chicago this morning. Again, she made some very bold statements. I mean, I haven't heard a, 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 a federal banker, a reserve banker, talk this specifically since Greenspan. I mean, Bernanke never gave us this information. Bernanke never came out and said the economy still needs help. He danced around it. It wasn't what he said. It was what he didn't say. Then at 10.30, now I'll tell you, they should take some of that good luck out of Texas and ship it up to Chicago. Because right now, the Dallas manufacturing number this morning, Dallas, Texas, of course, much higher than expectations. Apparently, they weren't kidding. Everything is bigger in Texas, including the manufacturing sector. They've had 11 months of growth. Now, remember, the state of Texas has always been one of those states that believed in, well, without using too many Texas puns, no bull. Right? Put your boots on and go back to work. And that's exactly what they did. They did not they did not fall apart in the worst times. Now remember, the state of Texas is a state that believes in uh, well, they they were one of the only states that weren't dramatically affected by the whole housing crump, uh, you know, the whole housing market debacle. Now why? Why was Texas not the state? Because Texas actually has laws in place that does not allow citizens in Texas, to refinance their their home mortgages and strip out all their equity, right? Remember, that's how the whole thing happened. The whole debacle here in the United States was those those subprime mortgages, allowing homeowners to strip out the equity. Well, the state of Texas, they were getting laughed at, right, in in the 2000s when everyone else was seeing triple-digit growth in in uh, in their housing prices. And, of course, Texas was notorious for having an 8 to 10% right growth rate on their housing so of course nobody was speculating down there nobody was flipping homes nobody was churning nobody was you know they they weren't doing all that stuff so not only did texas not get the big jump up but it was protected in the downside when the big debacle happened in 2009 2010 so now you're seeing all that hard work and that discipline not to get wrapped up in the emotions in the 2000s it's really it's really paying off for the state of Texas. So very, very happy to see that. It's not everywhere in the country right now. Now, one of my favorite times of our newsletter, this day in history, March 31st, 1889, Mr. Eiffel, the designer, over a hundred different plans were submitted. The city of Paris, France, wanted to celebrate the French Revolution, and they picked a, a wrought iron tower that at the time and I believe it still is, is the highest, was the highest, tallest building in the country. Now, I would imagine they've probably got a higher building by now, but at that time, it was the highest building, tallest building in the country. March 31st, 1918. 
Now, this is always a this is always a touchy subject for me. Daylight savings time. Now, it's kind of amazing because the reason why daylight savings time went into effect was originally to help conserve energy. That's why. You know, there are rumors in the U.S. that it was made for farmers or for school kids or <laughs> whatever you want to believe. But check out that link and you'll learn more about daylight savings time. It was actually enacted just to, just, here in the United States at least, right? It was enacted before this other place in the world. But in the U.S. it was, it was actually put forth to help save on the use of incandescent lighting, Right, that was one that was invented. That was the actual, actual burning, uh, uh, the actual physically burning light bulb. And then this, of course, is a is a sad story. March 31st, the Mexican Madonna. You know what? That was my nickname in high school. Back, I'm, I'm kidding with you. That was a horrible joke. The Mexican Madonna, Selena Quintanilla Perez. Say that ten times fast. She was 23 years old. A huge success, a huge, uh, uh, she, she really made uh, uh, the kind of, uh, what was it? It wasn't merengue. Oh, I'm, I'm losing the, uh, the word right now. Oh, I can't, I can't get it by now. If you know the word I'm talking about, though, give me a, give me a comment at the bottom. But she really got uh, the South, ah, man, I can't believe I'm forgetting about it. But anyways, she was a very popular, a very popular Mexican-American singer. And she was shot by the head of her fan club. Could you imagine that? Now, I know, right, obviously, I know the fan club for Joseph James. Of course, the JJ fan club is huge. I can't, Im- <laughs> I can't imagine the head of the JJ fan club shooting me. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll see. I better keep my mouth shut. March 31st, 1995, another sad story. Major League Baseball finally ended its longest strike, 232 days, it was only the second time in the history of baseball, the other time was in 1904, that we actually canceled the World Series. This was the only time in professional sports history in the United States that we've actually missed the playoffs, the entire playoffs. And of course, over the weekend, we had Major League Baseball's opening day. Always a very exciting time of the year. You know summertime is right around the corner when that first pitch gets thrown. So this day in history, that darn daylight savings time, I'm not a big fan. How about tomorrow? Now, what is going on? There's a list here as long as my arm right now for news tomorrow. So be ready for this tomorrow. First of all, new month begins. Beware of those April Fools. So make sure you avoid all the black cats, all the broken mirrors, the the ladders out there. I don't know what do they do on April Fools, right? They put a uh, you know stink bombs in the bathrooms or you know something like that. I, I don't know. I never really get into it. But be aware tomorrow, though. You will see a fake news report. You will see you know you'll you'll get surprised by it. It always catches me off guard. And then of course, thank goodness for the second quarter. Now you've probably heard me saying this before, but the end of the first quarter is notorious for being the most challenging of the week of, of the year. So the last few weeks of March are always going to be the most challenging. Whew, we made it. Sayonara to March. March comes in like a lion and leaves like a lamb. Right now, boy, the month of March is hobbling itself out of here. And we are excited for a beginning new month and a new quarter tomorrow morning. Contract rollover, don't forget. We had contract rollover on Friday, actually, to the 614 contract on gold. Gold goes to the 0414 to the 0614, the next market to roll over this month will, will be crude oil on the 18th. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. Now, we have a ton of news here. First of all, overnight tonight, I've got news here from the BOJ, get the Bank of, get the Bank of Japan survey. That's just like our FOMC day. Then we got manufacturing news out of China at 9 o'clock and 9.45. And then if we could use, I can't take any more excitement tonight, 11.30 p.m., we got the Australian rate announcement. So we've got some very important news out of Japan, out of China, and out of Australia. Those are all Red Star news this evening, so be aware of it. Tomorrow morning, out of Europe, I've got manufacturing from France, manufacturing from Germany, manufacturing from Great Britain. I've got the unemployment rate, the employment rate tomorrow at 5 a.m. from the EU. Holy Christmas is a lot of news here coming out tomorrow morning. 3.50, 3.55, 4.30, 5 o'clock, 
Don't say I didn't warn you. Now, the first thing I, the first thing I think about when I see a lot of news in Europe is the U.S. opening bell. Why? Because oftentimes when you see major news in Europe, now if you're in Europe, you're going to have a field day tomorrow morning. But if you're not in Europe and you're in the U.S. like I am, we're going to have to really hone in on tomorrow morning's opening bell and the opening bell analysis. So tomorrow morning, we're going to look closely at that. And what are we looking for? We're looking for higher than average volume and we're looking for a higher than average ATR at the opening bell tomorrow, right? Members, you know what I'm talking about. And then tomorrow morning, we have, yeah, we actually have more news to do. This is incredible, right? 9.45, we got PMI and at 10 o'clock. This is the big news tomorrow. We got construction spending, but the Red Star news is ISM manufacturing. So it's nothing but manufacturing across the board tomorrow morning. First of the month, first of the month. What do we always look for? Non-farm payrolls. The first Friday of every one month, unless that first day of the month is a Friday, you're going to get non-farm payrolls. Non-farm payrolls, don't worry about it yet, but Thursday, we'll be talking more about non-farm payrolls. It's coming right around the corner, guys. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now, we know that we have news for tomorrow, so you've got your news worksheet right here. Use that on your own time. We'll use that tomorrow morning in the trade room. And then let's go through some of these charts here today. I'm going to go through crude. I'm going to go through gold. I'm going to go through Russell. Now, first things first, another just range-bound day here on crude. Very difficult to tell why exactly this market is so iffy. It's just so range-bound. My gut tells me it's that Russia pushing it higher. Concerns about manufacturing in China and the U.S. pushing it lower. And so, remember, these markets don't operate like a video game, guys. It's got to be a buyer and a seller. You got to have a buyer to make it rise. You got to have a seller to make it fall. Right now, we have neither of these. We opened up inside. We're neutral. Closing print in the middle, neutral. Volume prints in the middle, neutral. Two-day range, sideways, neutral. I could keep going on here, guys. Now, the range was relatively narrow, not incredibly narrow like we saw back here. So I don't think we're going to get a big move out of this narrow range, but I would love it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we do. But I wouldn't call this excessively narrow, but it is a narrow range. Most important things here are we are dying for a breakout here. So get me above 101.97, get me below 188, and that's where I'm shooting for. Now, remember, right now on crude, We've made a bunch of cash buying the lows and selling the highs. I'm going to keep doing that until they stop working. We move forward here, guys. Now to my 64 anchor. You can see the big round number staring us right in the face there. We're still within striking distance. The most important thing that you see on this anchor chart is the fact that we're going up to that 103. The next resistance overhead is at 103.02. So, if tomorrow, if we end up going higher, you know we're looking for a reversal at that 103.02. We'll have to wait to see what happens tomorrow, though. But 103.02 is definitely where we're looking for resistance for a short or taking our profit on a long. And then we'll look to sell that and bring it right back down, all the way back down to the next level. So interesting right now, 103, though, that's your resistance. Moving forward here, so it looks like we have a bullish trend here on crude, as you can see. But look closer, though. This bullish trend it does not last forever. You can see here now, we've gone a little bit sideways here. Now, look back in time, because this is pretty much what happened here, too, right? Went sideways, and then whoop, right? So you can see there has, there has been a lot of this sideways slop and chop. Jumps up, jumps up, sideways jumps up. I think we just might have a pattern forming here. So we're going to stay bullish here on crude right now, but I'm not going to buy right here. I'm going to look to buy the lows of this channel. So here's the plan for me. 152, 117, 99, 68. I could also buy the 188, 10103. These are all going to be areas down near the lows. So buying here, target above us. 10319 is my target. I don't care where I buy, but I know my target will be the same, though. 103.19 is the target. Now, if we happen to go straight to the high of this channel, don't forget, that will take precedence. So take your profit at the high of the channel and at 103.19. 
But be careful. Don't buy right here. Buy at the lows. Buy at support. Buy at a discount here on crude. Moving forward now. They got crude under control. Let's grab the gold. Now, again, gold was on a tear to the downside. You can see that right here. We had a very, very good week last week selling short on gold. Here is a little bit of a tricky one. Here's a curveball on gold today. First of all, we opened up inside. We spent most of the morning here just chopping around, right? Going sideways. The closing print at the lows. That's not the big clue. The big clue is the volume. The volume is up near the highs. Now, this does not happen very often, boys and girls. Take out your camera. Take a picture of this because this is, this is not very typical. The volume and the opening, I'm sorry, the volume is at the highs. The closing print is at the lows. I want you to think about what that means. That means the majority of the trading going on this morning was up around this 1293, exactly where we closed the day before and the day before that. Something came out here after noontime today. It wasn't Janet Yellen. It may have been the lack of reaction to Janet Yellen. Because I think that might be the biggest clue we got today out of her speech. Was the fact the volume at the highs, the closing print at the lows. But Miss Yellen, you told us you were going to have loose, accommodative monetary policy. You told us you were going to be helping to support the labor market. Why on earth would gold go lower? I have no idea why. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to worry about the why. Tomorrow morning... If we have an opening print here below the 83.1, I am not going to worry about the why. All I know is, is the where and the when, and we'll be selling short down here to that 1272.7. Remember, guys, when good news is really bad news, when good news has a bad news reaction, you know you're in a bearish market. Like my good friend Jim Cramer always says, right? Bye, bye, bye. No, I'm, I'm kidding with you. Right? What does he always say? When, when bad news is good news, you know you're in a bull market for equities. Well, same thing applies to commodities. When good news, right, because if you're a gold trader, if you're long gold, it's good news for Janet Yellen to say more stimulus, more low interest rates, right, additional, additional support. But what happened? It tumbles. So good news for gold ends up being bad news anyways. That tells me we got some serious bearishness in this gold right now. So be on the lookout tomorrow, though, 1272.7. But let's see if we have anything else here. Let's see what else we have to look with. Ah, here's that anchor chart, 64 anchor. I got 87.2, 62.8. Now, it looks like the worst is behind us. It looks like the support here, 87, has been broken. So the next level below me is going to be 62.8 and then 27.3. Those are my new targets now if I'm selling short on gold. And then, hallelujah, we get a great chart here, giving us some easy opportunities here to sell. Remember, I don't want to sell at a discount. I want to sell at a premium. That is at a discount. I don't want to sell at a discount. I want to wait for price to come up so I can sell it at a premium. I make more money when I sell things at a premium, a car, a house, or gold contracts. I'm looking to sell short at 89, 91, 95, 9. I've got targets below me at 77, 9, 72 even. So we have a green light here right now to be selling short. I'm giving you the exact areas where I'm going to be looking for an entry pattern short this evening and into tomorrow, as well as the exact profit targets we'll use for those short selling opportunities later this evening. Moving forward here, folks. Gold's done. Now to the big mover, the golden boy here, the mini Russell. The Russell dropped over the past few over the past few days, but this Russell now starts to rise. So of course we called this big short on the Russell last week, and then on Friday it starts to rebound and whoop now starts to go higher here. We get a really bullish set of clues on this on this chart here on the Russell. First of all, we opened up inside the range today. That's, that's pretty standard for the beginning of the week. But the big thing here was we did not spend much time at all before jumping up. And this was all thanks to our gal, Janet Yellen. 
you'll notice 9.30 a.m. we open. Remember, Janet Yellen, she actually had her testimony released today at 9.50. So it was before that first candlestick was even closed. So that's why it jumped up so fast. The traders in the Russell reacted to the commentary from Janet Yellen saying additional possible stimulus, low interest rates, loose economic policy, etc., etc. Basically, she's saying, don't worry about, don't worry about tapering, don't worry about the stimulus. We're watching it right now, and we got your back. That's pretty much what she was saying, and all the equity markets clearly reacted to it positively. So inside was neutral, but again, look all bullish from here. Closing print. Closing print at the highs. Volume at the highs. I mean, literally, look at that. Look at that volume. Look at that. All. I mean, literally, that is almost right at the high of day. We had virtually no volume down bottom. A little bit more near the highs here, but again, all eyes here were at the highs. You can tell. All the volume is traded there. And only a little bit of profit taking there at those highs. So all signs right now point to bullish. But remember, we got a new month tomorrow. We got a new quarter tomorrow. We got April Fool's. We might have, this might be a April Fool's joke. We might end up right in the middle of this range tomorrow. So what do I do? Yeah, this is all speculation right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to pair up the opening bell to see if we really are still as bullish as we were today. So tomorrow morning, opening bell above 71.7. I'm bullish and looking to buy. Opening bell below 50.4. I'm bearish and I'm looking to sell. Tomorrow morning, we will be watching that opening bell like a hawk. And then, guys, keep a close eye on these two. Notice how narrow this weekly range was. That's the prior week low, 41.1. There's the prior week high, 93.8. So we could easily go down, right? Bounce off the previous week low, go up off the previous week high, go down, right? If we can't pick a direction long term. So don't be surprised here, guys. If we open up above the highs in the Russell tomorrow, don't you be surprised if we end up around that 93. Same thing is true to the downside. If we open up the lows, it's almost a guarantee we test that prior week low. But a very bullish set of clues we see today in the Russell. Now, here was that big monster. This was a support trend line. There's a big channel on here that you can't see very well on this chart snapshot, but if you zoom out a little bit further, you can. Now, we sold last week all the way down and took our profit to lows. Now, like I said earlier, we saw a bullish reaction to the support, and of course, Janet Yellen didn't hurt at all. Now, there's one thing here that I don't like. Where am I? I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. I've got the high of that little, that little wedge overhead, the low of that wedge below us. I've got resistance here. I've got support here, but what? I'm not near anything right now. And I want to remind you, as a day trader, my number one priority is to find levels on my anchor charts and look for reactions to those levels. So we got the reaction over, over the weekend, early this morning. What I really want is I want this price to pull back so I can buy the lows and take profit up around that 1200 right? 1194 Or I want to go up to the highs and sell the highs back down. So right now, I need something more than this, Mr. Mighty Russell. What else you got for me here? Jackpot. Now we go to our 16 anchor. Now we're talking. We are making new higher highs, making higher lows. We have a bullish trend channel, which you can see on the indicator package we provide you guys. We are above all the key moving averages all signs point to buy, buy, buy. But remember, I'm never going to recommend you hit the buy button unless what? You're at a discount. Wait for price to come back to us here. This matches up perfectly to that 64 anchor I just talked about. I want to buy the 61.1. I've got basically, I got 61.1. I've got 57.9. And I get a last call down here at 49.9 for, for being a buy. Now, could you sell short here right now? Yes, you could, but be careful, right? Be careful. You're selling short in an uptrend. 
this this may not pull back. It may just it may just laugh at me and go right up. So it may not pull back. But you know me though. If it does get back to that area, I then will begin to look for the entry pattern, get long, and I got targets overhead here, 74.4, 82 even. All right, those are my immediate targets. So we got three different buy zones below me. All righty, again, don't say I didn't warn you, but don't buy at a premium. Buy at a discount. Sell at a premium. Wait for that price to get up to a premium price and then sell it up here. All right, you guys got this stuff. You guys got this stuff. A very, very exciting first day of the week this week. It was a great Monday in our trade room. It began a little bit sloppy. I want to remind you all to go ahead and join our newsletter. As you can see, it is worth your time. And don't forget, if you want to come out and see us in the trade room one afternoon this week, give me your email address, and I'll shoot you a free pass to attend our live trade room. Pain is only temporary, but if you quit, it lasts forever. My name is Joseph James from the entire team here at School of Trade at our corporate headquarters in Los Angeles, California. I want to thank you so much for spending your valuable time here with me. Sorry this is getting out a little bit late this evening. Had a little bit of snafu on my computer this afternoon, but I'm back in the action. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We open up our trade room again. And I'll see you back here again tomorrow night for our next nightly newsletter sent out usually before 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much for your patience this evening, boys and girls. Hope you had a great month of March. Sayonara, March, and welcome aboard to the month of April. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to learn it so you can earn it, and we'll see you in the trade room tomorrow morning. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.